Good afternoon from London. Um, I'm Christoph Zenger, Senior Economist at the International Coffee Organization, and uh, I'm very happy to welcome you all to this joint uh, webinar we are having today. Um, this is on behalf of the ICO and our partner organization. Um, we put this jointly together. It is the um, Global Coffee Platform, the International Women's Coffee Alliance, and the Coffee Quality Institute. Um, this webinar takes place on the occasion of the uh, International Coffee Day. And um, this day is a, a particular um, day to celebrate um, coffee. And uh, we have uh, launched this initiative initially in 2015 at the Expo in Milan. Uh, and since then, the Coffee Day has established itself um, as a global celebration of coffee's journey from the farm to your local coffee shops. And indeed, um, as we speak right now, um, the, uh, we are being joined by coffee uh, lovers around the world um, at countless uh, events marking this special day. Um, the International Coffee Day um, for all of us is an opportunity to uh, honor those growing and harvesting the coffee we love. And uh, this year we have chosen a very special theme, which is women in coffee. And, um, the, uh, this provides us with a, an opportunity to celebrate in particular the contribution of women uh, to the coffee sector. So that's the celebratory element in it. But at the same time, we also have a moment to reflect on the state of women's empowerment and uh, gender equality in the coffee sector. So as I said, I'm very pleased uh, to not only be joined by you today, but also by four wonderful colleagues of the partnering organizations of the International Coffee Organization. And these are the GCP, the IWCA, and the um, Partnership for Gender Equity hosted by the Coffee Quality Institute. Um, we are um, bringing this webinar um, to you um, together and um, we um, thought about um, a, a, an, engaging, um, an engaging webinar around the journey from research to commitment to action. Now, perhaps my colleagues could briefly introduce themselves um, before I would then hand over to Caroline, who is going to walk us through the program of uh, the next hour or so. Thank you. Ah, well, thanks, Christoph. Maybe I start then. This is Caroline Glovka from the Global Coffee Platform. I'm a program manager with uh, GCP, and I also facilitate the Collective Action Network, Gender and Youth. So maybe, Kellum, you, I hand over to you for a short introduction. Good day to all. Happy International Coffee Day. Uh, my name is Kellum Emanuel. I'm the president of the Global Board of Directors of the International Women's Coffee Alliance. Blanca? Uh, good morning. Happy International Coffee Day to everyone. My name is Blanca Castro, working currently as a chapter manager of the International Women's Coffee Alliance. And good morning, everyone. My name is Kimberly Eason. I am the founder and strategic director of the CQI Partnership for Gender Equity. Happy International Coffee Day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, thank you. Um, so, uh, let's, uh, let's see what we're going to talk about today. Um, Christoph already uh, introduced um, the title of this webinar. So um, Christoph is going to introduce the findings of the new ICA gender report that's uh, come out recently and has only shortly been introduced. Um, we will then uh, see from IWCA their chapter work and what they are doing there. Um, I'm going to take you through the collective action with the Global Coffee Platform and Kimberly is showing uh, engagement to promote sustainable change. Um, that's uh, how we run uh, through the agenda. Um, for those who um, are not familiar, maybe you're using Zoom, uh, you will have a question and answer box. So if you have any questions, please put them in there and we hope to find a few minutes to answer those questions. So please feel free to use that box, otherwise you're silenced. Um, and uh, we just want to make you aware that this webinar is being recorded so we can share it for people um, who aren't able to participate uh, today. 
Um, let's look at the objectives of this uh, webinar. Um, it's really to share the latest research results on gender gaps that have been identified by the ICO study, um, gaps in the coffee sector, um, but also show opportunities for collective action to empower women and bridge those gender gaps. How does that work? And it's also um, the four of us here working together to align the efforts um, of our organizations for more efficient sustainability activities um, targeting those gender gaps. And uh, with that, I'd like to hand over back to Christoph. Uh, thank you very much, um, Caroline. Um, so for me, it's a great uh, pleasure to I introduce to you uh, the new ICO report on gender equality in the coffee sector. Um, this webinar, in fact, uh, marks the official launch uh, of the report um, today. Um, the, at the ICO, we have uh, annual themes that guide the work of the organization. And I'm particularly pleased uh, that um, this year's theme is uh, gender equality because it recognizes that uh, empowerment of women is a global priority. Uh, the report, um, some uh, details of which I would like to, um, to share with you today, um, provides an in-depth analysis and information for ICO members, so that's governments, uh, but also for sector stakeholders and decision makers in the coffee industry. Um, from uh, this year onward, there will be um, uh, additional um, annual themes on which the ICO is working, so stay tuned. Um, in the years to come, there will be more of these type of topical um, reports. And next slide, please. Um, for those who are not uh, intimately familiar with the ICO, um, the ICO is the intergovernmental organization for coffee with 77 uh, members, um, which represent around 98% of coffee production and 67% of world uh, consumption of coffee. And the objective of the ICO is to work towards a sustainable coffee uh, sector that provides livelihood for producers, but also sufficient uh, supply of quality coffee for uh, consumers around the world. Um, we try to uh, contribute to this objective um, in, in three ways. Uh, we uh, produce world-class data and research uh, to inform uh, decision makers. Um, secondly, we provide the forum for discussion uh, among um, the private and the public sectors uh, on coffee-related issues. Uh, and thirdly, um, we support the sector through projects and uh, promotion activities. And next slide, please. And uh, so the report that I'm presenting now can be seen in the context of the ICO's contribution to the United Nations Sustainable Development Agenda. And uh, as you can see from this slide, uh, the, that uh, achieving gender equality features as a goal in its own right among the sustainable development goals, the 17 goals uh, of the United Nations. So um, it is clear that women's full participation in public, economic, and the political life is recognized as a necessary condition for gender equity and justice. Uh, next slide, please. Um, gender equality and human development are positively correlated and uh, the research uh, that we have reviewed um, confirms that reduced inequalities uh, go along with uh, higher economic growth. Um, this figure here um, nicely sets the scene for the discussion we're having today um, because it shows that for ICO coffee producing countries um, that a high rates of inequality, higher rates of quality in of those countries that are measured by the UN index uh, on the horizontal axis um, lead to lower levels of human development as measured by the UN human development index on the vertical axis. So it can be clearly seen that inequality uh, imposes a cost on society in economic and in social terms. With the report, um, that we've produced, uh, we now zoom in from the level of the overall economy um, to that of the coffee sector. Um, next slide, please. 
Uh, our report uh, investigates the relationship between uh, gender equality in the sector and economic and social outcomes for rural com uh, communities. And with the report, um, at this stage, we mainly focused on the farm level, um, and this is due to data availability. Um, but uh, I would like to um, point out that as an organization, the ICO uh, acknowledges that um, it is important to foster gender equality along the entire value chain. So what's in the new report? Um, the key messages of the report are derived from a comprehensive review of the latest uh, economic studies on gender and agriculture. Um, and this library of research that we compiled um, is complemented with a thorough analysis of data, of raw data from other sources, including um, the World Bank. And uh, this um, analysis in particular uh, provides new insights and also very robust evidence on the extent of the gender gap um, uh, and uh, coffee production. And this information is crucial to understand where um, inequalities in the agricultural and in the coffee sector lie and how they impact the economic outcomes and the standard of living of women. Now, um, what is also about is that the Secretariat, also the ICO economists, have worked very closely with sustainability initiatives um, of the coffee industry, with NGOs, with international organizations and other partners um, to compile case studies that illustrate or that help illustrating um, how innovative and effective initiative, initiatives um, close uh, the gender gap. So there's also a very much of a hands-on um, uh, idea behind this uh, report. Uh, next slide, please. Um, let me turn to the, to the um, main findings. Um, uh, next slide, please. Uh, the, the report confirms with hard data that women make a very crucial contribution to the global uh, coffee sector. Uh, in the report, um, we uh, included only estimates of studies that use larger samples of farmers, so not anecdotal evidence. For example, we use national representative World Bank data with information on thousands of uh, households. And this helps us to come to conclusions that are a bit more robust. Um, so um, at the same time, we also still uh, acknowledge that much data is needed. So there's still a gap um, for gen assessment. And as you can see from that table here, where we have information on the share provided by women uh, in in, uh, in the coffee sector, um, uh, both in terms of labor contribution, but also in terms of um, ownership of coffee farms. Um, this is skewed towards uh, the African um, continent uh, with much less information uh, on Latin America and Asia. And so we are very happy to work together with our partners to fill the gaps here. But we find overall that women contribute to the sector as self-employed farm operators, providers of paid and unpaid labor on family farms, as well as agricultural uh, workers. Now, um, depending on the region, around 25% of the farms are operated by, um, by uh, female growers and up to 70% uh, of on-farm labor is provided uh, by women. Uh, next slide, please. Um, however, we also find um, that women are less empowered than men uh, in the coffee sector, and this holds true for both wives and partners in male-headed households, but also for women who had a uh, coffee-producing household, so who are um, operators of uh, coffee farms. Um, next slide, please. To understand uh, the source and the impact of gender inequalities in coffee producing countries, a systematic mapping is required to assess the current state of uh, women's empowerment across households, regions, and uh, countries. And um, we don't need to start from zero there. There is an index, which is called the Women's Empowerment in Agriculture Index, that was developed by the International Food Policy Research Institute, um, a US-based international research institute, that provides such 
uh, a measure of empowerment. And um, this is systematically done via household surveys. Get information is gathered in five dimensions. Um, it's how uh, empowered women are um, in terms of taking decisions on agricultural production, how much access to and decision-making power they have in the use of productive assets, for example, land or labor, but also how uh, much control they have over income derived from coffee production, um, how much leadership in the community they show, and um, how much um, uh, their time uh, allocation uh, is in their own hands. Now, uh, next slide, please. And the IFPRI, the research institute, um, published in 2014 a, a comprehensive study of 13 countries, nine of which are um, coffee producing members of the ICO. And it shows um, a varying picture of women's empowerment, ranging from a ranking of low uh, in Kenya, Ghana, and Liberia to high in Rwanda and uh, Uganda. Um, unfortunately, the um, study included only one Asian and one Latin American origin. And this confirms um, that uh, generally this picture confirms that there is a gap between men and women uh, across the five uh, dimensions of empowerment. Next uh, slide, please. So what, what, what does that mean in terms of economic outcomes? So we know that inequalities and disempowerment have neg negative, negative consequences across a number of economic outcomes. And uh, we know that as a result of gender inequalities, um, the economic returns of women in agriculture, so not only coffee, but agriculture in general, are often lower than those of their male peers. Um, some studies uh, from the agricultural sector um, and food crop production suggest a very large yield gap, for example, between male and uh, female farmers of up to 35% lower yields recorded for women. Um, for coffee, however, um, the, um, based on the evidence we found from our data analysis, um, the, it shows that the yield gap is not necessarily as dramatic um, which could also be an artifact of the uh, data that we uh, used, but we find some uh, evidence for a yield gap um, with regard to uh, lower value addition, um, uh, but also lower revenues uh, from selling coffee and lower household incomes for female headed households. Um, together with the evidence on gaps in empowerment, these, uh, these data points on uh, the gender gap in economic outcomes, um, we have uh, a, a picture that underpins that action is necessary in the coffee sector to uh, achieve uh, gender equality. Now, uh, the next slide, please. Uh, let us now move to a review of the factors that explain the gender gap. Uh, next slide, please. The difference in outcomes such as revenues from selling coffee and household income can be explained by um, difference in women's access to resources or their access to inputs compared to men. And research has indeed shown that the productivity gap, so for example, the lower yields or the uh, lower value added can be closed, this gap can be closed if women are provided with the same access to resources as men. And these uh, resources that are necessary for successful coffee production range from labor, land, to access to finance, and access to extension and skills. Let me show you a few examples that we found during our research. Next slide, please. For example, um, female-run coffee uh, farms are on average much smaller um, than uh, those um, operated by men. For example, we have a number of countries here. Um, uh, for example, in Uganda, um, the average household size is, uh, average farm size is around a hectare, and it's only 0.84 for um, female-headed uh, households. And this is systematic across um, a number of countries in the sample that we looked at. Next slide. Um, we also see um, differences uh, um, uh, between male and female farmers in their access to agricultural knowledge and skills. And for growers, 
agricultural extension uh, is often the main source of information on improved farming methods and new technologies. Uh, the evidence from the coffee sector suggests that there is indeed a gender gap in the access to extension services, with women being less likely to, for example, receive visits from extension agents or uh, to attend uh, trainings. And um, this is a survey data we have from Uganda um, with a couple of hundred observations, and it suggests that um, um, male farmers uh, are more likely to attend a training. Female farmers uh, only 46% compared to 58 for male farmers. And interestingly, female partners in households that are headed by uh, a male um, a farmer, um, the likelihood of um, the wife attending the training is even lower. So it's only 39%. Um, and so we have a very significant uh, gender gap here in the access to uh, extension and uh, in, uh, in the access to information. Uh, next slide, please. And these gender gaps then very quickly translate into uh, crucial um, differences, for example, in the um, use of inputs on the farms. Here we have um, evidence from Uganda, um, two years, uh, 2012 and 2015, and then consistently across these two survey periods, um, the female-headed households uh, used significantly lower, um, uh, a lower amount of inputs uh, expressed here in 1,000 uh, Ugandan shillings per hectare than their male uh, peers. And so it's about 17% uh, lower. And this is the result of lower access to credit, um, but also lower access to uh, knowledge on input use among uh, women. Uh, next slide, please. So what can we do to close the gender gap? Um, there's a, uh, next slide, please. There's a role both for the public and the private sector in closing the gender gap in coffee production. And uh, this is also widely acknowledged. Uh, more and more uh, rural development programs and also supply chain policies uh, include women either explicitly as target groups um, or implicitly through gender mainstreaming. And I'm very happy to be joined by my colleagues here um, today to also um, talk a bit more about um, how to um, how to include um, uh, women uh, as target group in, uh, in supply chain programs. Um, the initiatives and the projects aim at increasing women's access to uh, productive resources, for example, improving their financial literacy, and they can increase their say in household and farming decisions. But often that, and this is uh, very important, it also requires challenging perceptions and prevailing social norms in uh, coffee communities. Um, these policies um, are usually uh, also comprise uh, reporting requirements for initiatives, and it turns out that the sustainable development goals uh, and the framework of those uh, SDGs is um, used as common knowledge, uh, common language um, uh, across the sectors, and, and so not only by um, international organizations like the uh, ICO, but also by the partners um, in the industry, and uh, especially by the GCP and the Partnership for Gender Equity. Um, the gains of addressing the gender gap in coffee are great. So closing the gender gap would not only contribute to gender equality, as a goal in its own right, but also generate a wide array of social and economic benefits. Uh, and these include higher and more stable farm incomes, uh, as well as increased female say in household uh, decisions. And those um, factors are associated with better nutritional and health status of children um, living in these families, uh, as well as higher shares of the income spent on education. Um, the, the impact, uh, the, the, the magnitude of the impact um, certainly uh, depends uh, um, on the size of the initial gender gap and so it also varies uh, across uh, regions. Um, Fostering gender equality uh, will also be uh, very crucial in building females resilient, female farmers' resilience to volatile coffee prices and low coffee prices as we experience them at the moment, and also in order to build their adaptive capacity to climate change impact, 
which is one of the major challenges faced by the sector. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, let me now come uh, to, to, the, to the end. Um, it is very clear that fostering gender equality is not only the right thing to do, but it's also the smart thing to do. Um, at the ICO, we partner with uh, governments, with international organizations and private sector initiatives in fostering gender equality. Uh, and the milestone was certainly the approval of the Memorandum of Understanding between the ICO and the International Women's Coffee Alliance um, by the International Coffee Council last week. And uh, we look forward to our, um, to our collaboration in, in the future. Um, the, if following the launch of uh, this report, the ICO will continue advocating gender equality by um, presenting the key messages of the report in political fora and at coffee sector events. I also would like to highlight that we, through gender mainstreaming, will ensure that all development projects and initiatives that are supported by the ICO uh, aim uh, to address and provide to solutions to reduce the gender gap in uh, the coffee sector. Um, as a last word, I'd like to acknowledge that the coffee sector, the global coffee sector is extremely diverse and uh, much more research is required on the extent and the determinants of the gender uh, gap um, in the various uh, origins to gain a systematic, to gain a systematic insights uh, across different countries and regions. Uh, also, we need to extend this analysis um, uh, to cover the whole coffee value chain, including trading, roasting, retail, and consumer levels. Uh, that's all for me now. Um, I would like to thank you very much for your attention so far and would like to hand over um, to uh, Callum as we move from research to commitment to action. Thank you, Dr. Sanger, and thank you to ICO for such a uh, much needed and very well done report. We very much appreciate that, all of us from, from the coffee sector. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, I am the president of the global board of the International Women's Coffee Alliance. And our mission as reflected on the screen is to empower women in the international coffee community to achieve meaningful and sustainable lives and to encourage and recognize the participation of women in all aspects of the coffee industry. As you reflect on our mission, it's important to note that we are a volunteer driven organization celebrating our 15th year. Uh, as, as president of the global board of directors, my responsibility is to the entirety of our global network. Next slide, please. And when I say that, what I mean is the organizations, independent self-driven organizations that to date represent 22 countries across the coffee industry. Um, each, each country reflected here has a group of women and men that have come together to complete the process, the protocol for chapter formation in IWCA. And that includes a multi-step process that begins with uh, coming together and socializing across the value chain in that country, identifying strategic priorities that will be proceed, per, per, excuse me, pursued as a group, and then lastly, ultimately becoming a legally recognized organization in their country. At present, 21 of the 22 countries represented are coffee origin countries. Our coffee consuming country at, at present is Japan. We also have 14 other countries in various stages of the process to become what we call IWCA chapters. But as you reflect on the term chapter, I think it's important to be clear that each country reflected here comes together of their own accord and forms and identify and forms their own organization and identifies their own strategic priorities. Next slide, please. Our role as a global organization is to help facilitate leadership development, strategic partnership, and market visibility. And what I mean by this is, uh, at a minimum, women and men come together to form IWCA chapters because engaging as a global organization, fo focusing on the shared value of a women's empowerment mission provides the following three. Uh, leadership development, as, out, as I briefly outlined in the chapter formation process, coming together, working together, identifying shared priorities is a process of leadership development that ultimately 
at a minimum, culminates with that group being recognized at the national level in their country. Strategic partnership, when we say this, it refers to not only the partnership that occurs within the chapter across the value chain as reflected by that chapter membership, but then also the partnership that can be facilitated when it is one group working as a collective on shared priorities, both nationally or at the local level, as well as international partnerships that are facilitated at industry events such as the Specialty Coffee Association, the Specialty of Coffee Association of Japan, etc. And lastly, market visibility. Uh, the IWCA logo represents a shared asset that is shared across the global network of IWCA, including those who have uh, completed the process to become IWCA chapters, as well as supporters who engage to support the shared mission of the IWCA. Next slide, please. As I mentioned, each chapter identifies the strategic priorities to advance and empower women in their local context. For some, it's a, a focus on, uh, previous slide, thank you. For some, it's a focus on um, brand recognition, improving qu coffee quality. For other, it's a focus on improving human health and access to healthcare in rural communities. Nonetheless, uh, as we reflect back on the 15 years and look at the strategies that each chapter uh, un has undertaken, they can be summarized in, in forms of leadership development, community improvement, coffee training and education, resource procurement and asset development, advocacy and policy support. And on the last two, what is meant to convey, what I meant to convey is that resource procurement and asset development, some chapters are able to work together through partnerships to secure a washing station or to upgrade equipment uh, to facilitate coffee quality training or coffee cupping classes, etc. But as we reflect on 15 years and the strategies uh, undertaken across the global network, they, they fall mostly into these five categories. And I make sure to mention these because as those of you who are listening are, are interested in undertaking partnerships or understanding how you can support IWCA chapters, these may form a starting point, starting point excuse me, for your own thoughts. Next slide. I want to make sure to conclude with a few slides of photos to help you get a sense of the work occurring, again, across the value chain through the IWCA global network at the local level and then globally across our network. Um, you can see here roasters on the top left, roasters in Peru working on, on a roasting process in education. Next, moving across the top, you can see a young barista engaging at the IWCA convention in Puebla, Mexico. Next, you can see the depar uh, department, excuse me, the Democratic Republic of Congo chapter coming together for their annual meeting. Along the bottom, this is where I mentioned resource procurement and asset development. It's the IWCA Rwanda chapter coming together uh, to make progress on their process to secure a washing station. And in the bottom right, you see several women from across the IWCA global network, Honduras to Japan, engaging at the Specialty Coffee Association of Japan last year. And another example, um, just, just last week, uh, of women empowering women through IWCA occurred when the women of IWCA Japan hosted a cupping for coffees of other IWCA chapters across the global network. Next slide, please. I want to leave you with a few other examples of um, empowerment in action through IWCA. The top left represents the recently published in English ebook where the women of IWCA partnered with Embrapa, a research organization in Brazil, to conduct and complete the first of its kind at research effort to identify the different roles of women in coffee across each of the coffee growing regions of Brazil. And not only is that effort first of its kind, it's now available in both Portuguese and English. And you can access it from the Research Alliance webpage 
of the IWCA Global website. In the middle, you see the leaders of IWCA chapters, 18 of 22 chapters gathered in Puebla for the first leadership summit where we focused on how to strengthen the global network despite our limited resources. The last picture at the top, um, those of you who are linked in and, and watching our website will also notice that this is the picture with which we launched our case study series to highlight examples, a variety of examples of empowerment in action occurring across the IWCA global network. Along the bottom, you can see the one woman featured on this panel, Maria Bocho, who is both my colleague on the global board of directors, but also the leader of the uh, El Salvador chapter. Engaging here, peer-to-peer, -peer, problem solver, solution partner with men across, across El Salvador. And the last picture uh, it reflected here are the number of faces of men and women and children in Burundi who have benefited as a result of the work of IWCA Burundi to develop a premium program to um, support coffee producers in that country. Next slide, please. As Dr. Sanger uh, shared with us, based on recent research and compilations of research, um, as uh, former Secretary, UN Secretary General Kofi Annan had shared, and, and you can read the quote here, but I want to make sure to emphasize and make it clear, as we now know, no other policy is as likely to raise economic productivity, lower infant and maternal mortality, or improve nutrition and promote health. When women are fully involved, the benefits can be seen immediately. Women are fully engaged as central players. Next slide. How to engage and support the IWCA? Um, there are a number of ways, starting with low resource ways, for example. Across the top, you can see the bar of our web page. If you wish to better understand uh, and read the examples of case studies that I shared, you can, can simply visit the chapters the chapters menu item, um, and on that page, on that menu item, you can both access the case studies as well as connect directly with chapter leaders and engage directly with them to identify what resources or support might be of use. I, I want to make sure to emphasize that as self-driven and often volunteer-driven organizations, each chapter is at a different stage in its development. Some chapters have been fortunate to partner with local coffee authorities, whereas others are working on their own and don't have a business manager or a secretary. Others have been fortunate to be able to develop a membership model, whereas still others are still working actively to identify the best and most effective strategies to engage across the value chain in their countries. So you can also simply follow us on social media, find out what the chapters are working on, find out what the IWCA Global Organization is working on, and engage as makes sense as a volunteer or simply as someone who supports and, and shares our information. Of course, for those of you who are interested, there are a number of ways where businesses can partner with us. We have businesses who partner as sustaining supporters to help sustain our organization with a financial contribution. We also have businesses who partner by supporting their employees um, in consuming countries to host events that um, generate awareness and support for our organization. You, uh, the links to any of our social media channels are available along the bottom of our website, as reflected here in the screenshot on the bottom. And you can also sign up for our newsletter. At present, we don't currently have the resources for a, a frequent public newsletter, but it is a goal for us in the coming year to continue to share our stories and opportunities for engagement. Next slide. As I mentioned, um, I lead the global organization, um, and I lead it in partnership with my colleagues on the board of directors, as well as Blanca Castro, who's joined us today and can see your questions in the chat as well. Uh, Blanca is the person who has her thumb on the pulse of all of our chapters, um, both those that have completed the formation process and are identifying the best strategies to complete their goals, as well as those who are identifying if forming and coming together as IWCA chapters are the right fit for the goals that they wish to accomplish. 
Both of our comp contact information are reflected on the page. If you have any questions, we certainly encourage you to reach out. And lastly, I just want to make sure to take a moment and thank you for your engagement um, and following along on, on this presentation, as well as your recognition of the role of women's empowerment to solve uh, many of the crises facing the coffee industry, whether it's natural disasters such as our colleagues in Indonesia are most recently facing, or economic disasters such as the price discussions which have been at the forefront over the last few weeks. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Kellum. Uh, very exciting. Um, I will uh, show you now um, collective action, how GCP, the Global Coffee Platform, is convening it and its collective action network, Gender and Youth. Um, the goal here is identifying and responding to gender inequity at origin to empower communities and build resilience together. So uh, here um, in this collective action, which we have launched last year, uh, we brought together, yeah, uh, as GCB, as a multi-stakeholder organization, many stakeholders and in in introducing various topics. Um, and very strongly working together also with the partnership of gender uh, equity. Uh, and you will later hear from Kimberly more on that. So let's have a look what has happened and where we stand right now and what's going to happen last, uh, next year. Um, so last year we launched the Collective Action Network. Um, we, uh, together with the Sustainable Coffee Challenge, they also have action networks, um, which we align, uh, who's taking care of which topics. Um, we have engaged members on the topic and invited them to contribute also to the PGE-led uh, development of an engagement guide, um, focusing very much on the industry and also a common measurement framework to really um, make more visible um, how effective um, any pro projects are. Um, we have also we're had workshops at AFCA and um, PGE consulted also uh, through a technical advisory group to the, the development of the engagement guide and the common measurement framework. Um, so that has started, uh, that was last year. This year then uh, those two tools were launched uh, to the wider sector and shared um, through the Collective Action Network. Um, we also align interested stakeholders and collaborate with strategic partners such as um, the International Coffee Organization, an example is brought to you today, um, but also with Rainforest Alliance. Um, we are working on a very close partnership um, with them right now to, and um, I will say a few words later and, and the next point, and with a partnership for gender equity to work here together. Um, the national coffee platforms uh, GCP is facilitating, and uh, here I want to get back to the partnership of Rainforest Alliance, um, where for both organizations, uh, gender uh, equity is a very important topic and we discuss with national coffee platforms how these uh, how this topic can be integrated more into their strategies and also their national sustainability curriculums um, we also facilitate through so-called member initiatives uh, collective action at origin it's a new concept where we bring together um, GCP members and also yeah, other stakeholders of the coffee sector to work jointly on projects uh, regarding gender. But then uh, the results of these projects are being measured, of course, um, but also the learnings shared with the sector um, so that the wider sector can also profit uh, from these results. Um, how, how does collective action work further? So um, I want to take 
you through looking at the national coffee platforms and the global um, coffee stakeholders, which sort of um, get back to each other. So looking at the global coffee stakeholders, um, we encourage them now, and Kimberly will show you very concrete examples how this could work, to use the engagement guide and the common measurement framework. Um, develop a strategy initiative and then, of course, gather some impulse and feedback from, from the network, um, the hub that Kimberly will also introduce, um, implement the project, share the learnings report, and this then also uh, works um, or feeds back into the national coffee platforms where they identify their uh, gender gaps. Uh, embedded in their national priorities and uh, into their strategy. And they bring back then to the global coffee stakeholders or also proposals to become active um, and uh, join collective actions. Um, so we invite or national coffee platforms invite uh, stakeholders to be part of the solution. So this works on one hand from the national coffee platforms and on the other side the coffee uh, stakeholders having their projects and then GCP brings them together into collective action and also share learnings through the collective action network. The um, coffee platforms that GCP is currently facilitated you see on the bottom there that's Brazil, Colombia, Honduras, Indonesia, Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, and Vietnam. Um, Colombia uh, has a very strong focus on gender, uh, and Uganda, for example, has integrated uh, gender also into their national sustainability curriculum. Indonesia is also looking on how to um, bring out this uh, the topic better, to reflect it better uh, in the national sustainability curriculum. So the countries are really on um, different levels how to address the topic. So this is really um, the work of GCP to bring together the sector, the stakeholders, um, share the learnings, and um, as I said, we work closely together with uh, the Partnership for Gender Equity. Um, we are also now uh, in discussion with IWCA to see where we can align work. And uh, with that, I would like to hand over to Kimberly. Thank you, Caroline. <laughs> The Partnership for Gender Equity, uh, celebrating today International Coffee Day and the focus on, on women in coffee. Um, the first International Coffee Day, as, as Dr. Sanger mentioned, was three years ago, and we were pleased to launch our research on uh, gender equity in the coffee sector called The Way Forward, Accelerating Gender Equity in Coffee Value Chains. I think a number of you may have seen that report. It's been widely circulated. Um, we're very excited about the, the partnership with uh, the Global Coffee Platform and also um, aligning more with the, the International Women's Coffee Alliance and the work of the ICO. We recognize that that collaboration and collective action is key to really making a transformative change across the coffee sector. And it's not going to happen tomorrow, it's not going to happen next year, but we believe with the Partnership for Gender Equity that that change in gender equity, that really transforming to an equitable supply chain does not have to take generations to take root. That in collaboration, we can actually uh, cause a shift uh, within our own lifetimes and hopefully even sooner than that. Um, next slide, please. We are thrilled about the growing awareness of, about gender equity in the coffee sector as evidenced by um, the ICO taking up the theme and putting forward this fabulous report and congratulations to the ICO on that. It's, it's another needed uh, push and emphasis on, on this issue that as Kellum from IWCA mentioned is critical to sustainable development. It's critical to reaching uh, the sustainable development goals and it's also critical to the well-being of the coffee supply chain in, into the future. 
Uh, as Caroline mentioned, we have been working over the past um, couple of years now with GCP. We launched the two tools, the, uh, the Common Measurement Framework and the Engagement Guide in 2017, and now are working um, for how to more broadly disseminate those and create and, and to encourage greater uptake by you and other um, other stakeholders and other allies across um, across the, the global coffee sector. Um, next slide, please. S uh, and click once more. So uh, we work very much with a focus on uh, coffee farming households and communities around the world. Um, our approach to field level impact is really working at three key levels of the coffee supply chain, but specifically with the intention of impacting what's happening on the ground, because that is where we have the greatest opportunity to really make an impact, and that is where the greatest gender inequalities exist. Um, by working at these three levels, we can motivate change. Again, that doesn't take a gener generations, plural, to take root, but can actually happen uh, very, very quickly. So we work with um, the end market actors to help create tools and, um, and share information and resources uh, to help them better understand the issue and understand how they can take action uh, and measure the, the return on the return on investment. Um, of any uh, work that they're doing. We also work with farmer organizations and other entities on the ground to improve policies and practices and strengthen work that's already happening with regards to gender equity there. And specifically focusing also on the household level, recognizing that these imbalances that exist often between men and women farmers uh, and within the family unit are uh, incredibly detrimental to the success and the opportunity for success of coffee farming households. So that if, if we actually can work to uh, shift that balance and optimize decision making that, that the farmers are, are, are undertaking, that we, they can actually be much more successful as, as smallholder farmers. And that overall the chain is more, um, more stable, more resilient, and um, that every, every person working in the supply chain gets a bit more of what they're, what they're looking for. Next slide, please. We uh, just recently launched what is um, called the, the project methodology, which links into that, um, that, that approach, that field level approach for impact. Uh, this is a very dense document. Uh, it was co-funded by the um, Rainforest Alliance and um, the SAFE platform of the Inter-American Development Bank. And it leverages the common measurement framework that was funded by the Global Coffee Platform. There is a, a recent executive summary that we've created and I will um, uh, make sure that's available on our website and on GCP's website. It's much more accessible than the, than the thick, meaty, dense document of the, of the project methodology, which is really focused on um, practitioners and those of you that are really already working in the field um, to integrate gender methodologies. We do, um, uh, as part of the project methodology, there is a manual called the, um, the GALS, uh, the Gender Action Learning System Manual, that's available in English and Spanish. Um, next slide, please. So our intention over the next five years is to work with you, with different partners across the sector, with GCP, IWCA, ICO, to implement programs in line with the Common Measurement Framework and using the project methodology. And the idea is that by working in a similar way across these different um, partnerships and supply chains, that we can really measure what kinds of approaches are having um, a, a favor, uh, what kind of the impact these approaches are having on the ground. So our intention is to reach um, 100,000 um, men, women, and youth across these five years, working in eight to 12 projects across different regions. Next slide, please. Uh, quickly, I want to introduce Equal Origins Connect. Um, one of the things we realized is it's a lot to ask for a company to invest in a full three-year project about gender equity. We really want to encourage companies to invest in the household methodologies on the ground within their supply chain. Uh, making a stronger connection and understanding the importance of investing in household methodologies and, and causing that shift in balance at the household level. Next slide, please. 
And you can actually um, skip to the next slide because I we're going a little bit short on time. Because we realize that these household methodologies impact the kinds of more soft issues. Um, so food on the table, decreasing domestic violence, better quality coffee, household resilience, these kinds of things that are often very difficult to achieve through regular good agricultural practices types of trainings through certifications. Um, and direct trade premiums and things of that sort. So that's the reason why we encourage this investment in the household methodologies. Next slide, please. Uh, as Caroline mentioned, we are launching a learning and innovation hub for gender in the coffee sector. The intention of this hub is to bring together those uh, individuals, uh, practitioners, companies, development agencies that are interested in this topic to share and learn from each other and to learn from outside experts that we will bring in um, to share expertise on, on critical issues regarding gender equity in the coffee sector. We will be starting with a learning group. Um, you can see the different um, learning groups. Those names um, are to be filled in with other themes and topics that are brought up by you. Um, PGE, we will lead a handful of um, these learning groups and we invite others also to uh, create and lead a learning group also under the, under the hub. Um, the first group we will lead, um, next slide please, is on the common measurement framework and I invite all of you, we had um, 20 companies participate in the validation of the common measurement framework back in 2017. We're starting with those companies and organizations, but we do invite everyone um, who is working directly in the in the in coffee producing communities to um, to, to uh, work with us and potentially participate in that learning group. We will use um, uh, an open platform called Slack where we share ideas and resources. We will um, have webinars in, together with GCP on, on some of these topics to uh, foster a sense of community. And um, we will definitely bring in outside expertise to help strengthen overall the learning across um, all of you. Next slide, please. Uh, so we invite you to be involved. I won't go into more detail here on the CMF. I'll put, um, I think you have the email there of how you can, how you can get involved. Next slide, please. And then just, you know, please feel free to reach out uh, for questions. We're very excited about this opportunity. We recognize that it's the power and the wisdom of the commons that can really drive and create real change for uh, families and the coffee sector as a whole. So thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thank you, Kimberly. I just had to find the button for uh, putting my camera back on. Um, so yeah, this brings us really uh, up to the hour and the end uh, of the webinar. I wanted uh, to show, give you a short overview. Um, I think you heard now from um, the three different speakers where the learnings are and also the possibility, very concrete possibilities um, of engagement. So um, please contact Christoph. Uh, you see here, he has the email addresses um, regarding uh, the ICO study and uh, any questions referring to that. Then uh, you can contact me uh, to learn more about collective action and action at origin uh, through the National coffee platforms. Um, get back to Callum and Blanca for specific um, activities at Origin. And uh, last but not least, uh, Kimberly, contact Kimberly to um, learn more how to advance specific uh, gender topics um, or impact measurement. Um, there have been some questions coming in. I'm afraid we won't be able to take them, but um, we will add them at the end of the slides when and before uh, before we share them, and we'll, we will put answers in there. So uh, we will have all your answers, um, uh, sorry, all your questions answered. Um, and uh, you can, um, 
probably I, I think the best idea is that we send round um, the presentation through uh, your email. And um, with that, I'd like to hand over to Christoph one more time. Uh, yeah, to say the final words. Thank you very much, um, Caroline. Um, I think this was a really wonderful uh, hour, a little bit of a tour de force um, <laughs> through um, the topic of gender equality and uh, women empowerment in the coffee sector. Um, I, for my um, part, must say I've learned a lot. I'm, I've seen there's a lot of um, ways to engage, um, uh, be it through um, conducting more research, creating more knowledge, advocating, but also um, through a collective action uh, on the ground. Um, on the behalf of the International Coffee Organization, I would like to thank everybody um, who dialed in today. Um, it's been a great hour. I would like to also thank all the uh, speakers of today um, for their great um, contribution to this joint webinar um, that I hope we made uh, very successful indeed. And uh, with that, I think um, I just would like to invite everybody uh, on the virtual panel, so to say, to um, say happy, um, uh, happy International Coffee Day. And then um, we probably <laughs> go our ways and enjoy um, a freshly brewed coffee. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Happy International Coffee Day. <laughs> coffee Day. <laughs> All right. Thank well you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.